Hi, welcome or welcome back to another video. This week I'm trying something a little new. I've been wanting to try new mediums, so I decided to take the opportunity and film my attempt at watercolor that eventually became a mixed media portrait. Materials include a Windsor Newton Cotman 12 pan watercolor travel set, a white Posca paint pen, a Sakura Pigma Micron in size 01, and the 12 pencil Faber Castell Polychromo set. I use a 2B pencil for the sketch, and the paper I will be using is from a discontinued brand, but it's enough to say that it's watercolor 140 pound cold press paper. Let's get started. As you can probably see from the Lou Painter's tape, I'm not usually a watercolor artist. Normally, I work digitally, as you've probably seen in my other videos. I have some experience with dry traditional mediums, but wet? Not so much. Watercolor is a transparent medium, which meant my normal techniques didn't work, since I usually work with opaque brushes when I paint digitally. This led to a lot of experimentation with pretty mixed results in this first stage of the piece. So why film it at all? Truthfully, I thought about scrapping this video multiple times, but I kept the camera on and in the end I'm glad I did. What artists show on social media is often a finished, polished result, which can make the process feel like it must be easy and that if it isn't, you're doing something wrong. That's not true. We all make mistakes and honestly, I learn the most from pieces like this that go sideways and that force me to problem solve and come up with new techniques. It's okay to make something that isn't as good or better than your past work. You're allowed to experiment, make mistakes, and have fun while doing so. Do I think the watercolor portion of this piece is good? No. <laughs> but I learned a lot about watercolor, dry shifts, the importance of dry time, and it gave me a jumping off point for the rest of this piece. Another thing I wanted to talk about were my art supplies. None of these supplies are new. I think I've had the Cotman watercolors for almost eight years, and the paper is from AC Moore's store brand. AC Moore went out of business in 2020, but I think this paper is at least 10 years old and it started yellowing. you think I would be hesitant to use older supplies, but they actually lowered my barrier to entry, or re-entry I guess, to watercolor. I wasn't precious about conserving paint or being worried about wasting paper. Would 100% cotton paper and a heavier weight have made my life easier? Yeah. But as plenty of videos on YouTube have proven, what makes a successful piece isn't the cost of your supplies, it's your mastery of art fundamentals. Most artists started with the same cheap number two pencils and copy paper, or the back of mail advertisements in my case. I learned a lot about drawing on the back of paper ads, and this process felt similar, which let me experiment and learn more because the finished piece didn't need to be portfolio worthy or archival. I stopped putting pressure on myself. If you also feel art block over the pressure to create something great, I recommend grabbing some copy paper or an old sketchbook you never finished and setting aside those expectations for a bit. It helped me reset my thinking by reminding me of my childhood joy and hopefully it'll help you too. As you've probably noticed by now, this video isn't going to be only a tutorial like my other videos. It's more of a mindset chat for artists and creatives with a couple tips sprinkled in. I'll go back to more presentation style videos next week, but I wanted to try something new today besides just watercolor. I love having these kinds of videos on in the background when I'm warming up or drawing, so let me know if you want more casual fireside chat videos with real-time footage in the future. Anyway, after the paper completely dried, I decided to break out my polychromos colored pencils. As I mentioned before, I have more experience with dry media, which meant I had better control of my tools, and I had a couple ideas of how to fix the values and blending in this piece. I started by deepening and intensifying the shadows on her cheek to better define the planes of her face. Colored pencil looks grainy and semi-transparent on rough, cold-pressed paper, but I was okay with that. There's a certain charm to paper texture that I sometimes miss when doing digital art. This also meant I could layer more pencils before the paper became burnished and glossy, which makes additional layers difficult, if not impossible. I took advantage of the extra layers by using every color in this set at least once. My reference image, which is linked below by the way, didn't have many of these colors, but by using color theory, I could mix them to create the grays and browns of the shadows. It still ends up being much more saturated than the original photo, but I don't mind that. I wasn't aiming for photorealism. 
If you want a hyper-realistic effect, you can achieve it by layering complementary colors and working with more passes than I did to capture every little detail and freckle. I kept the details centered on the face, which is the focal point, and stepped back once in a while to check the overall values. If your lights and darks are in the right places, it doesn't really matter what color or hue they are. One tip I have for avoiding muddy colors is to put pops of saturation on the transitions between light and shadow. That's where I concentrated the orange and bright yellow in this piece. Later, when I blend everything, those transitions retain their vibrancy. Some areas, like the eyes, were dark enough from the original watercolor layers, but I wanted to add hue shifts that I wasn't able to achieve before, so I layered on colors like blue and green. From there, it was a matter of slowly building up form through layers of color. I tried to keep the three-dimensional forms in mind for areas like the lips and eyes, which curve with the face. I darkened the corners of the lips and eyes to make them recede in space, and maintain the highlights on the centers and other upturned planes. In the photo, the model is wearing a warm eyeshadow, which farther exaggerates this effect on her lids. I didn't have the exact color of brown in the 12 pencils I had access to, but I was able to recreate it using a light ochre color mixed with orange, some red, and some darker brown like I did with the other shadows. The eye whites are often darker than we think they are in photos because of the shadow cast by the lashes, top lid, and brow ridge, so I deepen the values here with a blue layered under a dark brown. The cast shadow from the nose onto her cheek still felt flat, so I layered more pencil over it to define the form of the nostril and nose bridge. Of course, not all of this was as dark as the rest of the shadows because there will be some bounce light reflecting off of the rest of her cheek. I ended up adding some layers to the entire face just to mesh the colors together and create a uniform texture. At this point, things were still looking rough and patchy, so I broke out a blending stump. When I was younger, I used to use my fingers, but even though I didn't need this piece to be archival, I didn't want the oils from my fingers messing with the layers of pencil and creating strange spots of texture, so I went with the stump. I started with the lighter parts of the face, like the brow ridge and cheeks, before moving on to the shadow areas so that dark pigments didn't darken the values of areas that should be catching light. Things start to look smoother because the stump is filling the crevices between bumps in the paper with pigment and mixing together the separate colors. It was at this point that I started to feel more confident about this piece. I could control values and blend with the added benefit of working on top of a colored base. I sometimes find colored pencil tedious because you need to layer so many times before you can achieve a smooth-ish blend, but I was able to work faster here because the watercolor provided a base that was closer in value to the pencils, which made overall blending easier. In some spots, like the brow and hairline, I wanted to preserve that initial texture so I didn't blend the short hair-like strokes of pencil there. By far, my favorite discovery of this art session was the usefulness of white colored pencil. I know polychromos white isn't the most opaque white colored pencil on the market, so I wasn't planning to use it in the beginning. But I needed to lighten values, so I decided to try it. I loved how it layered on top of her skin to create even more contrast in the forms. It wasn't opaque, but that was actually a benefit, since it ended up looking more like a natural highlight instead of a splash of white, and I could still glaze other colors on top of it to change the hue or tone it down. I was pleasantly surprised that the white was opaque enough to work as an underlayer for the pattern on her dress that's visible on her shoulders. You can see me layer colors over the white and it still remains visible. Anyway, I kept on using the workflow of layer on pencil, blend, step back, and repeat until I thought it was time for more contrast. While the white color pencil was great for carving out form in places where the piece had gotten too dark, it couldn't create a true white on top of dark values. The white acrylic of a Posca paint pen was great for adding things like eye shine and making the lips look wet in those areas I needed actual white. I also used the Micron to darken the pupil and lashes for the darkest value before switching back to the Posca paint pen to pick out the parts of the dress pattern that were catching the light. And that's it. The rest of the process is more layering and blending. This piece started out as a watercolor experiment that turned more into an appreciation for color pencil mixed with the epiphany of finding out about the white polychromos. 
I learned a lot and had fun doing it, and I hope you enjoyed seeing this more experimental process. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and see you next week. Bye!